This episode of the Sloopcast is brought to you by the Iron Bean Coffee Company. Iron Bean Coffee Company is a is a premium small batch, roast to order, veteran-owned coffee company. Lost uh, integrity, integrity is their core value. They have high-quality coffee beans directly from places such as Colombia, Brazil, Uganda, Honduras, Peru, Ethiopia, Indonesia, and other far-off lands. Uh, you can save money with a subscription service, so be sure to head on over to ironbeancoffee.com. Again, that is Iron Bean Coffee Company, America's local coffee roaster. Yeah, no, Matt, that's a, that's a little bit of the, uh, that's a little bit of the, the wife side sort of creeping his way in. Not, not, not so much the twang as the, as the rolling R. The rolling R. The Peru. <laughs> Who went full Brian Kelly? No one goes full Brian Kelly. Only Brian Kelly goes Brian Kelly. All right, Jerry, we have an Ask Sloopcast question episode here. The first that we were doing this, so let's let's jump right into it. All right. We've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? I'm doing all right, Jared. How are you doing today, good sir? I have no complaints. No complaints. I'm going to air publicly anyway. Um, we are we're still recording here on our Sunday night. Our, our our Discord chat still a little rowdy, off of a off of a Bengals win. Bengals going to the Super Bowl. We don't know who they're playing yet. That game's happening right now. Um, so yeah, we're we're still dealing with that. We're trying to we're trying to we're trying to reel them in a tad. Trying to reel them in a tad, but they're they're going all over the place. Uh, okay, ask Loopcast why doesn't Jared air his complaints? Listen, because we, I already one talk too much on this podcast, and two, these podcasts are already too long. I love complaining. Like, let's get. I love to complain. I will complain all day. It's it's just about time management on the podcast. Do I have seventy five percent time of possession? I don't know, Kyle. What do you think? I think that's about right. <laughs> and does that bother you? No, no, okay. <laughs> it doesn't. All right, uh, all right. This is an Ask Sloopcast episode, Kyle. What what do we have in the mailbag? All right, here we go. Uh, we're going to start with Duncan from the Discord. Uh, he asks here regarding to the portal, the transfer portal, that is. If you agree there was a certain level of locker room issues indicated by certain high-profile tweets and, and a mid-game portal entry, how does this get fixed? Well, I, I don't... First off, I don't agree... Well, okay, certain level... I mean... If you say certain level of locker room issues, then yeah, I, I think no team has no issues. You have 85 scholarship athletes. You have big ego coaches. Uh, you have, yeah, he's talking about Pope. Um, a whole slew of walk-on players. You know, it's probably what, like another 20 players at that point, maybe more. Um, yeah, probably more like 30 actually um what i mean there's there's going to be some issue right um but as far as pope goes um that that to me is a pope issue i think if you come to ohio state like his his big thing that that he complained about was like yeah if you want to get passed over by young guys go play at ohio state that's a thing he said on twitter he said that yeah, uh, and he said a bunch of things, but like, he's right about that. If you expect to simply be handed a starting role because you're a senior now, then you then you're right. You shouldn't come play at Ohio State. 
if you expect to just come in, wait your turn, and then be gifted a starting spot, Ohio State's not the right place for you. He's absolutely right. Kyle, thoughts? <laughs> you see, you, you see, Nomad, you, you make fun of me for taking up all the time, but I kept leaving gaps in there for Kyle to jump in, and he's just like, I'm just letting you just letting you do do your thing there, Jared. <laughs> no, I I don't think there is really a a fix because I mean there's still there's still kids, Jared. Yeah, <laughs> young adults. We keep getting older; they stay the same age. Um, which I just now realized is the is the line from um oh, oh I can't think of the name of the movie. Um. Uh, all right, all right, all right, indeed. Um, <laughs> yep, there you go. <laughs> now, in the way I'm saying it, however, is not insanely creepy like it was in the movie. Yeah. But the fact of the matter is, is that, like, you know, we're all adults and we keep watching these college kids make the, it is not fast times at Ridgemont High. That is the wrong answer, Buckeye Esquire. Um We keep watching these kids make the same mistakes over and over again. And of course, because we watch these things closely and we're adults and we've seen these things happen over and over and over again, and they aren't and haven't. Yeah. I, I, I yeah, I don't think there is a fix. It's, it's going to be on the coaches on how, how they handle it. It's, I, you just hope that you don't see this happen often at all. Uh, Nomad here ask why is Purdue so easy to hate in basketball and so easy to forget in football? Could my okay? I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna answer that question with a question. Outside of Columbus, could you reverse that and say the same thing about Ohio State? Days and confused. Thank you, Buckeye Esquire. That is the name of that movie. Um, so could could you reverse that? Why is Why? Purdue so easy to hate? No, no, no. Put put Ohio State in there and reverse it. Why is Ohio okay. State so easy to hate in football and so easy to forget in basketball? Is it is it not the same thing? You you hate a team because they're good, is my point. You forget about a team when they are sometimes good. It's really that yeah. simple. This is why people are celebrating that Tom Brady's retiring. Mm -hmm. And this, and why, and why they're celebrating that Cincinnati beat Kansas city. Right. Cause they want the new team in there. They want the new story. They want the underdog. Uh, they don't want the, this is why no one wants Bama to win another national title. Like we've seen it. We get it. We're over it. Let's, yep. we want to put someone up on the hill so we can knock them off the hill. Mm -hmm. uh, well, this is a good one. Uh, Nomad also asks, do football rivalries carry over to basketball or is it allowable to have different slash separate ones? I, uh, I think, different I think, slash yeah. separate, absolutely. Mm -hmm. I, I think like Ohio State versus Michigan basketball is a thing, but it's not the thing like it is in football. Meanwhile, Ohio I mean, State, I mean, Indiana is a thing in basketball, but it's not really a thing, at least on the Ohio State side of the street in football. I mean, look at one of the biggest, uh, biggest basketball games out there, the, the uh, Duke and UNC. Big, big Kyle, you live, you live in the big. research triangle down there in North Carolina. That's, that's where you are. Does anyone care when they play football? Only the hardcore fans. So, I mean, they're among the fan base. There is passion or I mean, no one outside cares because Duke's terrible at football, but. Uh, Nomad asks, are we the equivalent of Penn State to OSU for IU to Purdue? You'd have to ask an Indiana fan that that's a, that's a great question. Are, you know, All right, good. I'm gonna, there, there's that Bobby Knight thing, though, 
Yeah. There, there's a whole there's a whole lot of Bobby Knight history that sort of intensifies the Ohio State Indiana thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right, uh, let's see. Nomad. Nope. Sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. Uh, Buckeye Esquire says here, with the recent Penn State story, is there someone in the coaching hierarchy whose focus is at least in part to the student slash athlete wellness? Yeah, there there was a uh, Penn State player, I suppose a former St- Penn State player now, who aired a lot of grievance on Twitter. Um, I'm not going to go into too much detail on it because, quite frankly, I don't know how true it is. Um, I, I just don't. It might just be a former player throwing stuff out there in order to, you know what I mean? Like we, we saw to a much lesser extent, a few Ohio state player or yeah, for ex Ohio state players do that to Ohio state this year, uh, a cornerback, a linebacker to name a couple. Like, I don't know how true this, any of this is, is I guess my point. So I, I don't want to go into a lot of detail on it, but to me, is there someone on a coaching staff hierarchy whose focus is at least in part, you know, on the wellness of the, I, to me, that's the position coaches. To me, that is the position coaches. It's, you know, that's why in part you have position coaches. The head football coach can't look after 120 kids. That number becomes a lot more manageable when yep. it's you where like the linebackers and you, you know what I mean? Like the linebacker room is considerably smaller than 120 players. So uh, to me, that is at least in part a thing where it starts with the position coach uh, if the position coach needs, if the, the position coach is worried enough about it or concerned enough about it that he wants to run it up the flagpole to the head coach, that's fine. Um, and I'll say this. I, I don't know what Penn State does or doesn't do. Ohio State has full-time therapist on staff at the Woody Hayes. These players can go and talk to a therapist. I, I mean, I, I don't know if they're, I don't know how often they're I mean, at the very least they can make an appointment with a therapist and see them at the Woody Hayes center. I don't want to say whenever they want, but yeah, it's, it's, it's a thing that's available at least for Ohio state players in that way. Yep. I completely agree with that. Yeah. It's position coaches are right there working with the players uh, a lot more often than the head coaches are, or even certain um, coordinators too. So yeah, I agree. I think it's on the position coaches. Uh, let's see, Stewart with a question. Ryan Day has hired a ton of new coaches. In your opinion, which coach will allow Coach Day to get to that next step? Kind of like which coach will bait oh, him? No, no, in- stop, stop. Don't Don't say the rest of it. <laughs> <laughs> y'all, y'all, you thought you thought you had it for a second there i did you, Stuart. sorry sorry Stuart. You, i tried you, you <laughs> thought you had us there for a second didn't you um <laughs> i mean it all starts with the defense right i think for the first time in ryan day's head coaching career i think he's hiring a defensive coordinator and letting go I think he's hiring a defensive coordinator and I think he's going to say, okay, defensive coordinator, run your defense. Don't run my defense. Don't run Pete Carroll's defense. Go run your defense. Yeah. uh, He brought in Halfley, but here's the thing that makes Halfley different than everyone else. He did bring in Halfley to run Ryan Day's. He brings in Halfley to run Ryan Day's defense, which is actually Pete Carroll's defense. But Halfley was also a student of Pete Carroll running Pete Carroll's defense. So does that make sense? Did any of the, did any of that track? Um, yeah. I, I, f- I ask Lucas, does Fickle go to? No, never. Um, I once speculated if 
Luke Fickle would ever go to the team up north. And I had uh, several Buckeye parents who follow me on Twitter reach out to me and say, no, never, not going to happen. Um, these were, yeah, no. Well, never, ever, 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 ever. They, they said he would never do it. Uh, Penn State, maybe. Well, and, here, and, here, State maybe. and here's the thing. Here's the thing, too, now, Jared. I really think he's, unless a big, big opportunity comes to him, like, not going to happen anytime soon, but like Notre Dame or like a, like a really big school you don't know that. Come, come, come to mind. I, I think, think Marcus Freeman's going to be successful, but we don't know that. Yeah, I, I think he's going to stay at Cincinnati, especially with Cincinnati going to the Big 12 now. Right. Well, and we'll see how long the Big 12 lasts. I mean, There's we'll just be honest. Too, yeah. We'll see how long the Big 12 lasts without Texas and Oklahoma. I mean, this isn't the first time that Cincinnati has joined a, a power conference. Now, we called them the Power Six at the time, but, uh, well, we, 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 we moved that number down to five for a reason. Yeah. They, they joined right, the Big uh, East just in time to watch it die. You know, are, right. are we repeating history here? Mm -hmm. All right, a couple more questions, and then we'll take a quick break here. Uh, Nomad asks, is Cincinnati the new Ohio State South, and how mad slash bitter are Brown fans today? Well, I don't, you'd have to ask a Browns fan. Neither of us are Browns fans. Um, well, there, there's a lot going on Twitter right now where Brown fans are holding up the fact that, oh, we beat the Bengals twice this year. Congrats. Congrats. I don't, what, do you, what do you want me to say to that? Yeah. Okay. Did you go to the playoffs? Did you, did you win any playoff games? I don't, I don't care. It's the NFL. Like literally the best team and the worst team are almost the same. It's the NFL. Everyone's great. Everyone's great. The worst teams in the NFL are amazing. And that, and that's why whenever you hear, oh, this Alabama or this this whatever team could beat the Jackson, no. they can beat Jacksonville. They can beat no. the worst team. No, they could. Yeah, no, I pick your all time worst NFL team and your all time best college football team. Put them on the same field. The NFL teams winning that game seventy five to nothing. It's not. It's just not the same level. It's not the same. Um, we got way off topic there, Kyle. What, what we're re answering the your question new, is Cincinnati, the new Ohio state South. Oh yeah, 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 for sure. For sure. Joe Burrow, even if we, okay, if we want to say like half credit on Joe Burrow, right. Um, even if you want to say like half credit on Joe Burrow, Sam Hubbard, Eli Apple, Isaiah Prince, Von Bell and, and like all contributors on that team too. We're not, we're not just like pulling players off the bench. These are all contributors to the, to that football team. <laughs> uh, uh, gangland says once they get Michael Thomas, listen, that'd be fun. Right. By the way, that team's practically Louisiana as well. They got a ton of LSU players on there. If you get Mike Thomas. That's a former saint. Von Bell's a former saint. Eli Apple may have spent some time. I don't know. Eli Apple's been all over the league. Um, he did. He did. Gangland says he did. It's a that that team is uh, very Louisiana slash Columbus based, which makes sense. They're Ohio and they're Tigers. Yep. All right, Jared. I think there's a good point to do an ad read. So let's let's hear a few of the. Uh, <laughs> of the uh, coffees over at the Iron Bean Coffee Company. Let's look at the back room, Kyle. This is the back room section of the Iron Bean Coffee Company. In the back room, it's in the back. You venture past all the stuff. You find a big door. It, it looks heavy. Might be made of metal. Has big straps on it. You push it open, and there's a cold chill. You get a little bit of a shiver. You're not sure why you get a shiver. It's not actually cold. But you, you get a shiver nonetheless. And this is where you find the murder brand coffee. 
This is where you find the Murder Brand Coffee. In the Murder Brand Coffee, you will find the Serial Killer. This is a vanilla buttercream coffee. It's exactly what it sounds like. It's vanilla, it's vanilla and it's buttercream. Uh, it's made from single origin Brazilian coffee beans. Um, product details. It tastes rich like perfect murder. It's low in acidity. acidity. And of course, uh, available in whole bean or ground. Listen, when they say that these coffees are av available ground under the murder ones, it takes on a different meaning. That's all I'm saying. Uh, then there's the Stay Awake, which is a murderously caffeinated coffee. Be warned, it is strong. The taste is bold and biting. Brew responsibly. It's time to turn on your favorite podcast, open your favorite book, turn on that documentary you've been meaning to binge. Or is it really just time to turn on the news, draw your curtains, and lock the door? We know one thing. It's time to stay awake. Those are just two of the Murder Brand coffees. Uh, there's also the Blood Bath, which is a red velvet cake coffee, the Turning Blue, which is a blueberry cinnamon crumble, and the Solus, which is a ginger snap coffee. No further comment on that one. <laughs> you can find all of these coffees in the back room of the Iron Bean Coffee Company. That is the Iron Bean Coffee Company, America's local coffee roaster. All right, Jared, let's get some more questions in here. Uh, Gangland asks, "What team? when teams play a two deep in the red zone, why don't safeties cheat towards the corner just to force wide receivers towards the middle away from from weak spots in the zone. Well, I mean, because if you're in a two deep and you're forcing players into the middle, how much support do you have in the middle? I guess that depends upon the type of cover. Two. Of course, you said it. You didn't say a. You didn't say a cover two. You said a two deep. So I think a lot of that has to do with like how deep into the red zone are you, and like what's your middle linebacker doing. Because, like I said, if you're if you're two if you're two safeties are both in a deep zone. In theory, especially if you are running a cover two, you do have that seam in between those two deep safeties, which can be exploited with a post route or like a a, a deep slant. Uh, Gangley says, "I was just talking about the Rams game specifically because." Cooper Cup got the candy earlier there. I'm just, every zone can be exploited. This is why pre, by the way, every man defense can be exploited. Now, every defense can be exploited. No defense is perfect. If there was, they everyone would run that one all the time. This is why pre-reads are so important. If you can figure out what the defense is running before the play starts, you're going to find an open person. But that, that's why that's why the good quarterbacks are so good because yeah. they can read a defense and figure out where their open person is going to be. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you you want them you want that uh quarterback to try to make the hard throw over the defender to the one place that the receiver can catch and not not in the middle there. That that's why they try to play more in the middle and not towards the corners. It's just how, it's just how zones work. Yeah. All right. Uh, Duncan, with another question here, uh, which quote has aged more poorly? Cardell is with, we didn't come here to play school or Tathan's with don't swing and miss. Oh, I think this answer is easy. What do you say, Kyle? Oh yeah. It's, it's de definitely a uh, Tathan, Tathan's oh. comment. For sure. I mean, Car Cardale, both Jones. Yes. Both past school, he graduates from Ohio State, as well as starts. He both plays football and plays school successfully. In the and by the way, just and this is at least according to Cardale, like years after the fact. 
He sent that tweet. People went, oh, big dumb football player. Ha, ha, ha. He sent that tweet because he got a B on a test. He wanted an A. He got a B. He was mad about a B. I, this does not get talked about enough. He was frustrated because he didn't meet his own very high standard on a single test. He wasn't failing a class. His scholarship wasn't in danger. He wasn't going to be disqualified from the team for grades. He was mad about a B on a test. According to him, yes, no, Matt, according to him. That, that is his story, yes. And how many, how many, how many swing and misses did Tathan have, though? Uh, did he ever hit one? I didn't say he hit one. I said, how many swing and misses did he have? Oh, well, that's what I'm saying. Did he ever hit one? Nope. Did, did Tate ever start a game in college football? No, he didn't. He didn't start one, but he had that one great game. Did he start one at a, Miami? As a, as a, he had that. Did he start he had one that, at UNLV? I don't think so. Gangland says he thinks he started at Miami. I, I don't. I don't think he ever started at Miami. Did he? One game. I think the the point here being is that uh, at the, even if he started a game, even if he started a game, he was never like, they probably didn't want to start him. I'm assuming it was out of desperation. And one or two at UNLV, Buckeye Zach says. Um, yeah, I I think Kyle's working to to confirm this one way or the other. But the point is, is that he never, Kyle's shaking his head. Is it because you can't find it or because he didn't? I don't know. Okay, <laughs> it's fine. Okay, um, yeah, okay, well, I, that's right. Well, he I, did I, become I, a wide receiver at Miami. No. I'm talking about starting at quarterback. Starting at quarterback, none. At UNLV and Miami? Correct. And just so we're clear, he didn't start any at Ohio State either, right? Nope. Uh, is he currently the starting quarterback for the Chicago Bears? Can, can you confirm that he is not, in fact, the starting quarterback of the Chicago Bears for me? I believe I can. Okay. But he did have that one great game no, at Ohio didn't. State where he went 10 for 10 against Against Rutgers. who with how much time left? Yeah. Well, it was, I think it was the end of the first half, but it was already over at the end of the first quarter. <laughs> Point of the matter is that Cardell, past school, graduates, starts, had an NFL career. Not much of one, but he had an NFL career. What a Nathan national title. is a national title. Uh, he did have an XFL career. That is true. And uh, Tathan is exploring other business ventures, which I am still sure without being sure, but still sure has to be an energy drink or a scam crypto it has to be one of the two. Nomad asks, why is Bubbles the greatest trailer park boys character of all time? I can't answer that. Uh I think when when you are not as is the the sitcom character who is not required to like carry the carry the show, carry the storyline, you can just sort of show up in a scene, be funny, and then not be in the scene anymore. Those characters, I think, will always end up being like the funniest. All right, Kyle. Uh, what question do you have lined up now? Um, another question from Nomad here. What pieces is the basket bucks missing to go from good to great? I think we mentioned this a couple of times already. That second score, really that yeah. second score. I mean, having a 
a big man, like a like a yeah, like a true big man, a, an is, actual is, think, center. Yeah, an actual center I think is crucial to some teams that Ohio State plays, uh, aka like Purdue, who has like a seven nine foot center who play who's on the team. Seven there. four, seven four. <laughs> He's tall enough. We don't got to graduate him to seven nine. Um, <laughs> yeah. When was the last time Ohio State had a true center? I I don't know. Odin? It can't be, right? That can't be true. That really can't be true. I... That really honestly can't be true. But we're we're not we're not gonna look at Oh, um Costa Kufus. Yeah. Can't be Odin. You can't go that far back. Um Dials? Look it up, Kyle. Look Terrence it up. Dials was before Odin. Yeah, that's right. He was. And then, be, and then before him, then Kusta before him was Ken, was Ken Johnson. But yeah, Kusta was directly after Odin. So you're talking like 14 years ago. And even Costa Kuf, like he was tall. I don't know, he's, he's such a Euro center, though, right? Anyway, I don't know. Um, I feel like we're forgetting someone. Like, it, it hasn't been that long, right? It can't be. Sullinger? Oh, uh, Elder Sullinger. Right? I think he was considered a forward. A power forward? A forward. Well, yeah. I say it's had a lot of power forwards playing center. Uh, I mean, EJ Liddell and Zed Key <laughs> as examples. Kyle Young as an example. Um, was Jared Sullinger was a power forward. I don't care if they called him a center or not. He was a power forward. Even if they put a C next to his name on the box score, he was a power forward. Yeah. Yeah, Evan Turner, maybe. Center of something. All right. Um, a question from another question from Nomad, just because I, we're just going to ask this because I know he has, he has thoughts and um, opinions, most likely wrong, but <laughs> okay. does Ohio State basketball need a coaching change? No. No. Ohio State, I think has some really great talent coming in. I really like the freshmen in this class and they have an excellent class coming in next year. I think we're looking at a sea change at Ohio state. I really do. That's it. That's, right. that's my answer. Um, all right. We'll, we'll end it with one last question with a over under total number of punts. Ohio state this upcoming season is forced to make during the regular season and the over under. Um, oh yeah. He wants, he wants us to do the over under for the 2022 regular season. Oh, I thought he was setting it at 22 and I'm like, man, that's real low. Honestly, um, honestly it's 22. The right number. <laughs> how many regular season games? Let's, let's start there. Regular season games, there's... It's 12, right? 12. Yeah. So averaging almost two a game. Almost. I would feel more comfortable at like exactly two a game, right? But even then, that feels low. Because even against a bad team, like we saw Ohio State do this year, you, you end up with those second half punts, right? Yeah. You end up with those second half punts... You're probably good for two punts a game against bad teams. And then four or five against good teams. It, it, I think it's probably closer. Do we count garbage time punts? Yeah. Cause that, that was not the, that was not the question. The, the question is how many punts. All right, guess how many punts Ohio State had this last year from Jesse Murko? Uh, is this just regular season? 
Uh, ooh, that's actually a good question here. Let me let me dig let me dig Kyle's deeper dig. into that. Kyle's gonna dig. We're going to dig. Uh, let's see. Minus. Let's see. Okay. All right. I got it. Yes. This is. This is eleven games. This is. Eleven. Uh, Should be twelve. Oh yeah. Actually, that's right. Because one of them he didn't even play. So twelve. <laughs> so the regular Zero season punts in game. That game. <laughs> yeah. Regular season game. Guess how many? Uh, I want. I want to see who. All right. In the come chat on, chat as well here. How many punts do you think Ohio State had through the through the Michigan game? We got twenty, including the Michigan game. Yeah. Yep, including yes. I said through. 20, so we have 18, twenty. 17. Then we have eighteen, seventeen. What, what I'm do gonna you say, say, I'm gonna say like twenty four. We were all under. It is twenty nine. Yeah. I've, 25, I mean, 25 if you take out the. If you take out the Michigan game where he had the most punts and he had four in that game. Well, he, right. had, he had four in Nebraska, too. This is what I'm saying. It's you get into some of these junk time games and punts happen. Um, let, let's let, let's set it at twenty seven and a half. I see. I'm more like twenty nine and a half because I think this team will be better in some respects um, offensively but also worse in some respects offensively, especially if we're just mm -hmm. talking about statistically, because we don't know what's happening with the offensive line. Like, let's just get that out there. We don't know what's happening with the offensive line. There, there's a bit of a, 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 a personnel shakeup along the offensive line. You're also losing two of the best Ohio state receivers at all time. Like I get it. Ohio state has amazing receivers coming up and blah, 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 blah. I get it. I really, 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 really get it. I promise I do. But also you're losing two of the best Ohio state wide receivers at all time. Proven commodities. Proven commodities. And I know we're excited for the young guys, but come on now. We can't simply brush over the fact that two of the best Ohio state receivers at all time are leaving this team. Offensive line seat change. That being said, CJ Stroud's going to be so much better this year. So much better this year. So that's an improvement. Yep. Also, but let's let's also keep in mind, Kyle, the potential that Ohio State won't need to score as much this year. Hopefully. If the defense gets fixed. Hopefully. I think right, 29 Jared. and a half is a good, I think is a, is a incredibly optimistic number. All right, Jared, that is it. That is the questions we have for today. All right. Uh, let's see. I plugged merch on the last episode. Let's, uh, let's, let's, uh, Hey everyone, come join the discord. Yeah. Nomad, you don't get to talk, buddy. Nomad thinks he gets to talk just because he's in the Discord, but he but he doesn't. Uh, but we we might yeah. Gangland says come join us because we might be buying a missile silo. That's more of a Patreon dot the Sloopcast thing. <laughs> like if you want to if you want to come join the the cult at the missile silo, then you're going to need to probably join us on Patreon dot the Sloopcast dot com. Uh, lowest tier there is three dollars a month. And that gets you access to all the digital stuff that you could possibly want. Um, but uh, if you want to get these inside jokes about missile silos um, and about me being mad at Stuart for trying to get us to say a certain thing on the podcast and about Nomad and his. Uh, his uh, his need to talk on the show or to get us to say things on the show. Uh, if you want to get all these inside jokes, you're going to have to come join the Discord, discord.thesloopcast.com. Kyle, do you have anything in Kyle's corner? Oh, well, I know this is going to be way ahead of when we're going to, when we're going to uh, put this, but we got ourselves a Super Bowl matchup now. It all is right. the Bengals and the Rams. So I'm sure, I'm sure Bengal fans are happy. Well, depend, maybe, but 
maybe happy because they don't have to play San Francisco a third time in the uh, in the Super Bowl. Uh, to me, to me, I'd want revenge. If I was a Cincinnati fan and I'm not, I'd want revenge. Like I'd, I'd want like no. It's kind of like Ohio State when they when they beat uh, Clemson. Like some fans were like, no, I don't want Clemson in the playoffs again. This was last year, obviously. I don't want Clemson again. And I'm like, nah, bring on Clemson. We need to write this ship. We need to take all of this wrong and write it. And we do that by beating Clemson. To me, if I was a Bengals fan, that would be my thing. I would want, I like, no, give me the 49ers. We need to settle this. But that's just me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But no, it's Buckeye good, Zach good, says, uh, but the Rams are easier to scheme. I, I, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I, if someone who follows the Bengals more closely or the Rams more closely than me wants to tell me that, um, that's a better matchup situation than like, oh yeah, take the better matchup. If one team's a better matchup for the Bengals, obviously take that team. Yeah, no, definitely a good, um, uh, I mean, definitely good, uh, storylines, Jared. I mean, you got the Bengals doing well, finally in the, in the playoffs, make it back to the Super Bowl, And then you have the Rams with, uh, Stafford finally getting his shot at the Super Bowl too. So it, I'm liking it. I, I, I like the, uh, I like what I'm seeing for the Super Bowl. I'm excited. I, I, I... The 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 football historian inside of me would have rather it was the 49ers. Okay. That's it. That's it. That's 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 the whole thing. All right. It's really right, only it. from that perspective. <laughs> All right, that's it, Jared. Let's go ahead and end today's episode. Oh, let's do another Cincinnati band. In fact, let's do Cincinnati bands. Should we do Cincinnati bands all the way up into the Super Bowl? Let's at least through this week. All right, we'll see. We'll see. Let's do another Cincinnati band uh, celebrating the Bengals success here. This is Settle Your Scores. This is a pop punk band from get this, the Cincinnati area. Um, if you if you like bands like Newfound Glory or, uh, you know, in, in that general area. Nope. Nomad pop punk um, in that general area. Then I encourage you to uh, check out Settle Your Scores. Uh, if you're listening to the audio version of this, all you have to do is nothing. Just keep listening. And uh, if you are listening to this on or watching this on YouTube, uh, there is a link down in the show notes that you can click to listen to this song and watch the video. Uh, and it's one click away. It's just down there in the show notes. So with all that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, this is Settle Your Scores. Settle Your Scores.